The Miller Beach neighborhood has a long history, a strong reputation, and some unique challenges. On our show today, we have two guys who go way back. Stay with us. Welcome again to Lakeshore Focus, a weekly show highlighting the key issues, important events, and interesting people in our region. I'm Keith Kirkpatrick. There is one neighborhood in Northwest Indiana that is known by practically everyone, including Chicago folk. It's Miller, or Miller Beach as some call it. Located on the northeast side of Gary and hugging the shoreline of Lake Michigan, you will find one of the oldest communities in the region. When I moved here nearly 30 years ago, there were two names often associated with Miller, and when I met these guys, I understood why. With me on Lakeshore Focus today are Gene Ayers, the owner of Ayers Realtors, and George Rogi, who is president of Rogi Insurance. You guys have been around here, I guess, a while. Yeah. Yep. Oh, sure have. And, and they have a lot of parallels, because you're both third-generation businesses. I think your great-uncle started the business? Great-uncle started the business in 1922. My father came to work for him in, after World War II, and I showed up in 1970 uh, for, after graduating from Indiana State, where I met George. Yeah. Now, th this is really interesting. I didn't know some of these things about you guys. And your business has been around how well, long, too? Well, actually, a year later, <laughs> 1923, my grandfather started Rogi Insurance. And uh, then my dad came in. Um, he didn't want to because he was an engineer from IIT, but he was there until I came in in 69, and he saw his exit then. He could go do what he wanted to do all his life. So it's, we're both uh, kind of parallel, that's for sure. Well, well, it's interesting. You guys both have this deep passion for the Miller Beach community, but you kind of started, now you've been there all along, right? I was, I was uh, born and raised there, uh, went to Wirt High School in, in the Miller Beach area. Uh, and, and George was actually from Glen Park, Lou Wallace High School, and we didn't meet till college. Wow, so you, were, so you were a few miles apart, but you both went to Indiana State. Correct. And you met in a class down there? Yeah, insurance class. <laughs> wow. The major, was a, it was a combined real estate and insurance major at that time at Indiana State. Hmm, I can see the parallel, that's kind of interesting. So did you <laughs> right. date the same women or anything no. like no, that? No, 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 no. no. Just no. stayed away from that kind of thing. So were you friends in college? Not, not, not so really. much. I mean, we just met each other there, you know, picked up on these parallels, and then George did mention that he had always wanted to live in, in uh, Miller Beach by mm -hmm. the beach. And you were like being a realtor or on the brink of being Realtor, you said, I could maybe help you find something. Actually, I forgot all about it. <laughs> until a George, missed opportunity. Until George uh, I brought it up. I brought it up oh. again. So did you help him find a house? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. Absolutely. Wow. Mm -hmm. Are you in the same house? Uh, no. Well, no. No, not at all. <laughs> okay. Um, so you've changed um, a few times. Yes. All right. So tell us a little bit about this community that you both like. I think I could describe it as you're both very in love with it. George, how do you describe this community? Well, it's a resort community. It is absolutely a beach resort community. I mean, when you come into Miller uh, on Lake Street off of 12, let's say you came in from the South Shore Station, you know, from Chicago, and you're a mile and a quarter from actually being in the lake on a public beach. Now, just before that, you can stop at the Douglas Center and walk through the trails in the National Park to the beach. So it's a total resort area. That's what it is. Did this community develop before Gary did or at the same time Gary long, developed? Long, long before, before Gary, because the, there's a cemetery, a lot of people don't know that, in, uh, in uh, Miller, downtown Miller section. It was started, started by the Lutherans there and Bethel Lutheran Church is still active and just uh, is putting a, it has a new minister starting next week. Uh, but it was the Bethel Lutheran Cemetery and the first grave in there is 1851. Wow, yeah. so this community has been around a really long time before, years. before Gary, yeah. East mm -hmm. Chicago, and, and Hammond even developed. I, I know there were other little settlements around but Miller was the, a real town, town hall, still there. 
uh, a school that was built, uh, the Miller School, still there. Um, Railroad Station. Railroad Station, the, uh, where the Miller Pizza, Miller Pizza is now. Yeah, it's now, the station. Did people take the train out there back in the 1800s? They did, and there's some evidence in, in history that the train from Chicago to, to Miller was active for uh, fishing. Uh, the early, early settlers uh, fished off of the shoreline in Lake Michigan and shipped their fish into Chicago. Wow. So how has this neighborhood changed? You guys have both been around it for, gosh, now what, 50-some years, <laughs> yes. right? Okay. I had to do the math there a little bit. It's getting close to 60. So you guys must have started this when you were, you Teenage, must have finished yeah. college like when you were like 17 Teenage, apiece or yeah. 16. So you've been around a while. How has the neighborhood changed for you, George? Well, um, from the time I used to get on the bus from Glen Park for 10 cents, and end up at the old bathhouse so I could go to the lake. And um, it, it, it hasn't changed for me. I mean, honestly, um, mm -hmm. it's just- Does it look the it same? Just gets, no, it's better. It's yeah. much better now. I mean, it's, it, in fact, where that bathhouse is, is got $28, 000, $28 million of improvements in that park. That means you guys, you and your buddies really wrecked it badly back in the day? <laughs> well, it was, it, was, it was okay in the uh, 60s um, and late 50s is when I went there. Uh, and then it, of course, declined and was boarded up. And it, did they take the graffiti off the wall that you left? Uh, we did that. We yes. did that in 91. <laughs> So this has been been a project. How has the neighborhood changed for you, Gene? How is it how is it well, different 50, 60 years ago well, to today? Well, it was always a diverse community uh, with a um, some Hispanic population. Some uh, uh, Jewish temple was built there in 1959, so there was a Jewish uh, uh, community in Miller. So there was diversity there of sorts, but the, um, the real integration of the community started in the uh, late 60s, early 70s, about the same time that I was coming to work for my father in the real estate business. And um, Miller, Miller Beach, I, I think I can safely say, applauds diversity. Uh, that's one of the attractions that people cite when they move to Miller, that there's diversity of all types. It's not just racial diversity or ethnic diversity. It's um, diversity of opinion, diversity of housing, inexpensive old housing, brand new, very expensive housing, uh, diversity of, I mean, name your diversity, we can, we can handle it. So this is really interesting because this neighborhood successfully integrated, successfully maintained its diversity or increased its diversity, whereas Gary and some of our other communities had the white flight and and the and that didn't work. What was going on in Miller? I'm asking both of you. What was going on in Miller that made that work? I, I think two things that I'm going to defer to George about the Miller Citizens Corporation, but I think that <clears throat> the diversity that was there already, uh, I would call it a fairly liberal community, um, and the fact that we had Lake Michigan and the Dunes. Um, those factors, the diverse community and, and a natural attraction were very helpful to the effort that was made to stabilize the community with the Miller Citizens Corporation. And since George is the chair, is the president of the Miller Citizens Corporation. What is the Miller Citizens well, Corporation? Well, it was started in 1971. That's kind of interesting. That's the same that, time you came. Uh, well, right? no, I, I well, 69 is when I came. Okay. okay well. A couple of years before that. <laughs> yeah. You, you were there. And so, um, you know, when everything was changing in Gary. Uh, and we didn't want those kind of changes happening in Miller. So the Miller Citizens Corporation was started by three gentlemen. Um, and, and it's still, I'm president today, actually. Were you so, one of the three gentlemen? No. Oh, okay. There's no. three other guys. The older community leaders yeah. of the day. People like Mose Diltz, Clarence uh, Borns, Clancy Borns, and Fred Eichhorn. Okay. So they were. Those are some big names. Those in the are region. big names, yeah. and they lived in Miller, and they and they cared, and they cared to make sure that this community would would uh, be 
be great. So, he, so here are three older gentlemen, right, as you describe them, who are very involved in this, and they engage this young punk, this <laughs> new guy, right, that moved into this organization. That doesn't always happen that they bring new people in like you. How'd that happen? Well, I don't know. That's what we try to do in Miller. In fact, Gene and I are doing that right now in the organizations that we're in. We're finding those new young people, those under 50, and, and uh, we're finding them, and, and they're getting involved. We, we got like uh, young Jessie Renslow. She's what in her twenties or early thirties? Big thirties. Maybe thirties. Yeah. Okay. But under fifty passes for young with George and I. <laughs> with with yeah. the legacy, with the legacy uh, foundations uh, spotlight uh, community thing, and uh, she's got a hundred and thirty young people involved in different things that we could never get them involved in. So you before. see this importance of getting young people in yes, yes, engaged. Yes, absolutely. Because right. we're, I mean, we're, we are getting older. We, we admit it. And uh, our energy level is not the same as it once was. Uh, and these, these younger people moving in are stepping up. And, they, mm -hmm. and again, they come from a diverse uh, community. I mean, there are a lot of um, Chicago based educators from uh, the School of the Art Institute, uh, Columbia College, um, Uni uh, University of Chicago. Yes. Uh, You're very, yeah. a very artsy community, right? Very much, I mean, yeah. That art is integrated into your, the blood of, of that community. Well, the formation of the art district um, about six years ago now was both to celebrate the arts and give a um, um, I'd say a economic uh, boost. Economic boost by encouraging those people to come to our area. They did a great job with pop-up art um, uh, affairs that brought people from outside the community. Uh, that that and we went. We were in the recession at the time, and uh, there was vacant storefronts. All the storefronts are filled up now. You know, so we're. There's two dress shops. There's uh, three different art venues of art of different types. Um, and there's the 18th Street Brewery, <laughs> yeah, one of my a, favorites. Which, favorite which I gym. noticed you guys tend to talk about some of the, wa the, the watering holes quite a bit. So um, <laughs> but we'll, 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 we'll leave it there. Yeah. Let, for, for some of our viewers who aren't really familiar with this area, um, let's describe maybe a, a little bit geographically. George, for you, the beach is a bit, for both of you, the beach is a big thing, right. but this beach is really very long as part of Miller, there's, right? Uh, there's actually six, I, I used to say there's over five miles of, of unobstructed beach, but then when Google Earth measurement tool came to be, it's actually 6.1 miles that you can walk unobstructed, and it's all public. It's either National Park or Gary Municipal Park, Marquette Park. So that beach belongs really to the community. It I does. Mean, to, to everyone, everybody to has everyone. access to it. I Just the other day with a home buyer that was out said, well, you mean I could just go down to the beach in front of your house and set my chair up? And I said, yes, you could. Now you can't park at my house, but <laughs> but you can. Unless uh, I pay a fee, right, no. Yeah, no, the, uh, no, that's our, I think, there's parking at either end of our, of our section of that six miles. It's about three miles in three miles. Gary, the Gary portion. Then you have between West Beach and the National Park and then Ogden Dunes. That's all contiguous beach. There's another three miles of, of so, yeah, another three miles. beach there. Wow. So how would you describe it, George, to, if somebody said, tell me about just what I'd see if I came there? Well, first of all, we're surrounded by a national park. And we're the very western edge of this great big 15,000 acre park. And, and, uh, and again, you can park your car at the Douglas Center and go for a three or four hour walk through the most beautiful dunes. Um, it's, it's, uh, Lake Street is kind of the um, the main drag, so to speak, but the main drag, it starts at a train station and ends in the lake, and in between is just getting great. It's got all the stores, all the beach-type uh, beach art stores, and again, 
that has a, bun, a bunch of watering holes. Water, watering holes and some really cool restaurants. <laughs> and in, good in, restaurants. In the, area, in the area. One of the things I've noticed when I was over there, and Gene, you and I had a conversation about this just the other day, is, I mean, there are parts, though, still of that neighborhood that I would call challenging. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. You look like you got some a few boarded up houses, some properties that aren't really kept up. Yeah. What's going on with the parts that aren't so up to snuff? Well, I mean, <clears throat> we certainly have to admit that it's not perfect. It, it's uh, there. There are those challenges. The this city uh, of Gary has stepped up in recent years with with some uh, demolition that was needed and uh, is helpful. Um, but it's not, you know, there's lots of demolition needed in the city of Gary, and uh, so Miller gets some of it. And, uh, and we're, we work together to, uh, I mean, we, I mean the community works together with the city uh, with the cooperation of a couple of our local title companies who have been willing to do inexpensive title work. Uh, we're being able to target some of the bad houses and give, get, get, or properties, I should say, and give the city a little leg up uh, with help where the, the, our citizens are actually paying for that title work of a bad house in their block or their neighborhood, and that gives the city the incentive to work with that particular house. Are most of those focused right around kind of the, the, the what we call the little downtown area for you there, the sure. Lake Street? Sure, but not exclusively, but yes. Uh, well, it's yes. the oldest part of Miller. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's old housing star. I mean, it's really old. Late 1800s <laughs> and early 1900s. So that's kind of where it started. That was at least the business center, I would assume, where the stores and things were for even anybody who was living near the beach. So, But it's also the opportunity for these young people from Chicago, some of whom who don't even have a car and rely on the, their bike and the train, um, to buy inexpensive housing and fix it up. So there's lots of that available. So it's a great opportunity. Opportunity for these young people to move out of the city, even with the commuting costs, it's way less expensive for those people. So this new two really great assets, or one who's, that's on the brink and another that's there, I want to talk about the park, but they're going to upgrade your station, um, the South Shore station there, significantly, right? What's oh, going to happen to huge, it? Huge. What's going to happen to it? And it's such a, we're, I mean, George and I, I and a lot of people in the community are so um, gratified by the cooperation of the city, the state, the county, uh, and hopefully this month, the feds. feds. Uh, all those pieces fitting in. Congressman Visklosky's been working uh, very hard on this, uh, as well as the governor, uh, a re Republican governor, a Democratic congressman. People have really come together on that double tracking. And you're gonna have a real live station there that people can go into, yeah, right, so, George? Uh, level boarding. Um, that way uh, people can come and go with their bicycles, um, which is very popular. Um, and the time to go from, from Miller on the express train, they're talking about somewhere between 30 and 40 minutes. Wow. Straight downtown Chicago. That'd be huge. Yeah. Miller would be the express station under the plans that are underway now. And that we just be a think, huge advantage. A huge, but you, yeah, you huge can't advantage. drive there that fast. Right, that is, that is true. Well, I've tried it many times. <laughs> so, the the park, Marquette Park, is a huge renovation, and mm -hmm. you both have been involved in that. But you were yes. particularly worked on the this aquatorium, right? Well, the aquatorium part uh, that was, in, I was uh, park board president of Gary. Um, for a number of years, and the, aqua, uh, the old Gary bathhouse was just something that should, in my view, should be renovated. And so under the Barnes administration in uh, 1991, I took him, took off one of the boards and took him upstairs and said, I want to renovate this. And he said, okay. And we started on March 10th, 1991. We opened it. Uh, as you could call it, opening. It was open on my birthday in 1991 on July 24th. And uh, we had 600 people come. Enthusiasm was just great. Uh, we, able to, we were able to start a society uh, for the continuing renovation. 
and we raised $4 million. Did they do then, this intentionally on your birthday, you think? <laughs> I, uh, it was important. It was <laughs> important. So, well, it's, it's really interesting, and I think one of the lessons I hope our viewers get, I mean, you're talking about early 90s, and really the whole park renovation was just finished a couple of years ago. So, I mean, this has been like a 25-year right. challenge. And, a 25, and so things just don't happen overnight. And you no. guys have stuck with it from beginning to end through all this. What has made you keep doing this, keep working in this community over and over? It's, it, at the very beginning, it was, it was worth saving. You know, the, the unique character of the community, it just, you know, I, and not just George and I, I mean, there's, there's a cast of characters and workers and people that have made this happen over And those the years. who watch this will know, notice you call them characters. But <laughs> I've met some of them. They You've are met characters. Some characters. Yes, right. they are characters. But just Great our regular people, people from, uh, you know, it, it could be a uh, retired steel worker and, and it could be a captain of industry. And they're all working for the same goal. In, and you in, like that. I love that. I, I love that. I love the, uh, I, you know, I, I joke that at, uh, at a real estate convention downstate, I can hold the attention at the bar after the meeting with my stories. They're better than their stories. <laughs> <laughs> Why do you still do this? Well, you know, once I start a job, I start doing something, I have to finish it. And some of these things take a long time. But I'm glad the Aquatorium is done. Um, I helped start uh, the Nelson Olagra Museum. It's coming along. Um, and I'm hoping that I don't get an, you know, I'm getting old too. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, George, you still have I, your yogurt spirit. I can't do another 25 year project though. <laughs> <laughs> but you got these new people coming yes. in, so th this is important. So we're, we're down to the, to the end here. If you were going to make a pitch to somebody says, you know, just, you get to pitch Miller. So what's your pitch to somebody who doesn't know anything about it? What are you gonna tell them? Be open. <laughs> Uh, come, come and see it for what it is, um, and look, see our shops, see our beach, see our national park access, and just be open. And then the best thing that you can do if someone wants to figure out the Miller thing is walk in the neighborhood and talk to, to residents. It, they are, they're happy that they're there. That's, that's, that's a great recommendation. Yeah. What's your pitch? Well, mine is a common experience a Midwest beach resort. I mean, it's one of the finest in the world. Well, you guys have done such great things here. I, I, is there one last thing you want to do, just real quick? I want to say that George should mention that the Aquatorium is for rent. Oh, okay. For events. So, so <laughs> one last thing you want to do, real quick, you know, something you still want to accomplish. I, I want, um, the same type of service that our, my little company has done to continue uh, where we're welcoming everybody to Miller. What's one thing you I, still want I, to accomplish? I want the continuation of what we started to continue and everybody will be happy. Well, I thank you so much for being on the show and for the leadership that you both have provided to that community for a long time and the wisdom to help develop the new leadership. So thanks for being here. Thank, thank you. you. Being a leader in a community is one of the toughest roles one can occupy, particularly if your community faces some significant challenges. If you have major problems, you are experiencing population reductions, housing deterioration, public services stretched, and schools struggling. Resources are limited and probably diminishing. Then you have the outside communities looking at you like you're a failure and can't make it. Your own constituents are frustrated and they are arguing, they are angry, they are hurt. They have watched their community slip and are viewed as part of the problem. Differences of opinions feel vast and usually transition into bickering and infighting. It sounds dismal, doesn't it? In the middle of these dreary scenarios, you will find a special group of people. They have been fighting the good fight year after year and have never given up. They still believe it can be better and they will never surrender. They see the good in people, view problems as opportunities, and know how to leverage limited resources. You will find them at every event. 
notice a warm smile on their faces, and see them listening intensely to the worries of others. They are the first to volunteer and the last to leave. What drives these people? I believe it's a hope for a better day and a belief that it can be done. They are optimistic and confident that positive change will come. They want what's best for others. Some love the challenge, others enjoy a sense of pride. Little steps are appreciated as accomplishments and victories are enthusiastically celebrated. You must admire these folks. Some might make fun of them, but they are a driving force in a community that is struggling. There are times when they may want to give up or may be worn down, but you never see it unless you are very close to them. They just keep pushing and will not give up. Maybe you are one of these people. If you are, I applaud you. If you are not, be sure to support and encourage those who are. What they do is not easy, and we need them and you to be those positive driving forces in the community. No matter what happens, these people will never surrender. As always, I want to hear from you. We welcome your comments and thoughts about the content of this program or what is happening in our communities. You can email us at focus at lakeshorepublicmedia.org or reach us on our website, both listed on your screen. Seldom a week goes by without someone saying, I missed your show last week. How can I watch it? They must not wait until the show ends because nearly every week I remind them past shows are on the website or can be seen on YouTube. Now you know. Join us again next week for another Lakeshore Focus. Until then, I'm Keith Kirkpatrick saying, make a positive difference in our world today.